Hi class, it's Bill Berry, and I am back talking more about Java Swing. In our first video, we set up a little bit about the background. What uh, it, We talked about event-driven programming first, and then we talked about Java Swing, gave you some background. The last video, we started talking about J-frames, and so we are basically in our Java Swing area, and we are talking now of continuing where we started with J-frames. Remember that the J-frame does the basic things that you need a window to do. lets you move it around the screen, minimize, maximize, resize, etc. It is a top-level container. Right Now, that means that it is not typically a container on which you do a lot of other stuff. You don't typically add things, excuse me, add things directly to that, nor draw directly on that. Typically, JFrame exists solely to be a top-level container, and it's expecting that you do other things with it, that you fill in other stuff. What is the other stuff that you generally fill it in with? Well, it's a J panel. A J panel is a mid-level container, right? And a mid-level container is something that sits between a J-frame and the other things that you typically do. So we're typically going to take our J-frame and fill it with a J-panel and then onto that J-panel we can add other stuff. So what else do we want to learn about that? We can draw graphics on a J-panel. So if you just wanted a place to draw, you would want a J-frame and then fill the J-frame uh, with the J-panel. The other thing that's interesting about J-panels is they can be used to do layout of controls. They have a way to automatically lay out a series of widgets that you put on them. They will do grids for you or organize the widgets in a horizontal way or a vertical way. They can do a whole bunch of things for you using a thing called a layout manager. We're going to take control ourselves and just do it ourselves, so we're going to say set layout null. That says I don't want a layout manager so just let me do my thing. So that would be a whole other interesting uh, topic to look at layout managers. We're not going to have time here uh, but that is an interesting thing to look into if you want to say hey I want to have a grid of controls or I want to have my controls laid out for me so I don't have to do all the work. Certainly that's possible. So J panels can do great stuff. Let's see what it's going to take for us to add one of them onto our code. I'm going to compile this just to make sure we're starting in a good spot. Okay, so if we want to add a J-panel, one of the things that we're going to have to do is we know that we're going to need a J-panel and we can pretty much bet that everything that starts like this is going to be in Java X Swing. So we know we need a J-panel, right? And what else do we need? Well, let's see what else. We'll come to it and see what else we want to do. So now, once we have our top-level container, we have all the stuff here that we need, and maybe uh, we can we can sort of continue down here if we like, uh, or I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in between. It doesn't much matter where you put this. I'm just gonna put this down here, right? This is gonna be my J panel stuff. What do I need to do to make a J panel? Just make it. Just make a new J panel. Doesn't need any kind of special stuff passed to the constructor. Just make a new one and of course you probably want to have a reference to it. right? You don't have to. right? We could just make a new one and throw it on there, but in case you want to talk to it specifically in the in the future, which you probably do, we probably want to speak to it directly by calling it by name, so let's make a new one, give it a name, point it to a newly created JPanel in memory. And then for this one time this command looks weird. In the future, when we put other things onto our JPanel, they won't look so weird. But for this mid-level container, for this, this case where we want our JPanel to be the thing, it's going to be the host, the mid-level container on our JFrame, the reason that we are using this code is because of that. We're going to say, hey, JPanel, or JFrame, sorry, please give me access to your content pane. So get content pane says, hey frame, give me your content pane, and to that content pane, I am adding my newly created panel. This is weird code. Again, in the future, when we go to add things, the code's going to look a lot more like this. We're going to be adding directly to our panel. But in this case, the way that we attach it as this mid-level container is to ask the J frame to give us its content pane, and then on that content pane we're adding our JPanel. That makes it, by the way, fill up the entire thing. 
and then I can do things like, hey, panel, I want to set layout to null. I don't want you to do any work for me in terms of laying out my widgets. I will take care of that myself. Yes, that's the hard way, sorry, but we'll learn how to do the basics, and then, of course, if you want to learn about layout managers, go for it. Now, this is all going to compile fine. This is going to run fine. And we're going to say OK. And you'll notice it would come up in the center of the screen, but it doesn't look any different. So at this point, we have done the thing we needed to do, which is add that mid-level container. We've added our J panel there, but it's not going to look any different yet because we didn't really do anything with it. So again, a mid-level container sort of implies that we're going to have lower things. We're going to add things to this mid-level container, which is, of course, exactly what we're going to do. So let's take one more step. I don't want this video to get too long, but let's take one more step and let's reset this and let's do one more thing. And that is, let's see how we can use uh, put on a button. Now I'm not going to bring up the next slide because it has a lot more detail in there that we're not going to get into just yet. Uh, making the buttons one thing, using the buttons another thing, right? So that gets us into real uh, event-driven programming. So for the moment though, let's just go back here and let's see how we can add a button and then we'll come back and talk about how you can do things with that button. So again, you can guess that we're going to do this and guess what this is going to be called? A J button. Let's say that onto this we want to add two buttons, one that will beep, will, will uh, make the system sound uh, beep happen, and then we want another button that will, uh, that will close the whole thing, close the whole thing down. So after this, I can go in and start creating my buttons. How do you create a new button? You make a new J button, and the constructor will have a thing that says, hey, you can give me the text for that. Right? You can give me the text that you want on that widget as part of the constructor, as a parameter, and that's great. And of course, I probably want to refer to it by name. If I want to do that, probably should give it a name and give it a reference. So I create my beep button, and I probably want to tell it where on that J panel, where, where is it going to live, right? I'm going to attach it later to the J panel, but, but how big is it and where is it going to go? Because remember, we said, hey, we don't want to do any layout manager. We don't want any help. So now we're sort of having to do it ourselves. The way that we do that is with a command called set bounds. And set bounds says, what is the X position at which you want this to be? What is the Y position at which you want this to start? What is the width of this uh, widget? What is the height of this widget? All right. So it's always X first and then Y. So X position, Y position, X width, Y width. That will let the button be uh, set exactly where we want it to in the dialog. And you notice the dialog is, how big is it? 300 by 200. Right, so this is, this is on the right side of that dialog. Then I'm going to copy those two lines and I'm going to create another button. I'm going to call this the close button and I'm going to call this close. And its bounds, I'm going to leave everything the same except I'm going to start it at 50, 60. So it's going to be on the left side of the, of the dialog about halfway down. Does that make sense? Now I've created those buttons but the panel is our mid-layer, mid-level container. We need to add these things to the panel, right? We need to add those things. Now this doesn't need to be down here. Probably it makes more sense up here. And then this leaves us being, this is the place for our buttons, right? So this is our panel stuff. This is our button stuff. So we create those buttons. Now we need to add them to the panel, and this code is going to look a lot more normal. The, rest, the way that we add widgets to our J panel is going to be a lot more reasonable and normal. We simply say, hey, to our J panel, I want to add beep. To our J panel, I want to add close. Right? So I'm adding to the mid-level container now widgets and those widgets are going to be hosted on the J panel, which is taking up all the room that sits on the J frame. So does that make sense to you? 
All right? So any kind of widgets are a lot easier to add. All you have to do is create them, say where you want them to live within your dialog. Again, if you have no layout manager, if you had a layout manager, you could just add them and it would go and try to figure it out for itself. Then there's a few more other things to learn. But in this case, we're just physically saying where we want this to go. Now, no, no, no self-respecting developers ever going to go and figure out these numbers, right? You're always going to use some sort of tool. Uh, this, these sorts of tools are available. Uh, a really crude one, but can work for simple stuff like this, is called GUI Genie. Uh, it is it is crude, but it will you will it will let you lay out widgets by you know, sort of dragging and dropping. And most good IDEs, fancier IDEs, will probably have some sort of tool that they support uh, that will help you create these. But it doesn't matter. We're getting started, so this is fine for us to do the work ourselves and understand how this works. So what are we going to get now? We're going to get buttons, right? Close this, make sure everything's compiled, run this, and what comes up? Oops, our beep button comes up, not our other button. Let's figure out why. And of course the reason here is, you notice, you may have seen this, I set the bounds of beep twice instead of setting the bounds of close. All right, so let us solve that problem and then let us restart this. Here we go. And uh, now we have our close button, not our other one. So what have I done wrong now? Uh, okay, so close set bounds. Yeah, that's going at 50. Beep, we add close, of course. Now I have to make sure, since I was testing, that I add both buttons to my GUI. All right, here we go, real time. Uh, development. Okay, so now here's what the dialog looks like. Both close and beep show up exactly where we want it, about halfway down, and closes to the left of beep. Now, you'll notice nothing's happening when we click these things. We haven't done that part yet, right? All we did is we're creating a GUI. We haven't done any actual code that responds to any events, right? We haven't even talked about it. What are the events that happen? How do we respond to an event? All that stuff, of course, is coming. But take a peek at this code. Pause if you want to. Pause the video and watch. Uh, take a peek at this code and make sure that everything that we've done here makes sense. Otherwise, back it up a little bit and hopefully this will all kind of come together as you work. It's good to create these sample apps as you work and make sure that you're following along and you're seeing what's going on here. Uh, there are some times when orders of things make a difference. In our case, this seems to work just fine. Uh, there are times that, especially if you're using a layout manager, then there is an ordering. Uh, you definitely have to add your widgets, and then there's usually a command or two that you have to do uh, to make sure that it has had a chance to figure out the layout that it needs to do and then make that presentable. So for us, this will work completely fine, and we have a completely working GUI that does nothing because we haven't responded to any events. So next on the list is going to be how do we respond? How do we listen in Java terminology for events that have been triggered and then how do we respond to those? So really interesting stuff coming. The way that we write that code has some real surprises in it. So we will cover that in our next video. But for now, that's a great place to stop. Thanks for watching this one. See you back hopefully next video.